Hey everybody, it's Caden and Santiago, and we're back on episode 2 of Critter Chasing Kids. Today we're going to be looking for two species of gecko, the Mediterranean house gecko and the western banded gecko, both found in our neighborhood. We're going to be looking for that. We're also going to be looking for some lizard poop samples. Ew, that's gross, Caden. Oh, Let's on, go. Oh, that was a ride. Yeah. Now, to maximize our chances of finding our prime suspect, the gecko, we have to find crevices. Dark and scary crevices. Because they have a tendency to hide in them. Let's get going. Go. There's one. There's one. Is that the Western Bay? No, that was the Mediterranean house. Oh, that's the one I caught. No. That I was talking about. He's gone. See, this wall here has nice little grooves in it from being used so much as a wall. And that's where they can just sit in there and hide. So you can do this with a flashlight and just see if you can find them. Yeah. We've already seen one, but we didn't get the chance to even catch it, so he's a, he's we, know, we know this is a good spot. And no, th this is a good place for Mediterranean House. We walked by the wall slowly so we didn't miss any geckos. Animal tip. When looking for geckos or any other animal, try not to overturn rocks because when they're overturned, it becomes like a destroyed home for an animal that might have lived beneath it. So if you're even gonna flip them, always return them to the same position. Ready, go. Okay. Got him. Just try not to pick him up. Oh, 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 let me get him, let me get him. Okay. Again. So right now we're trying to get him. This is a nice little juvenile. And you can see it is he is a very well-fed individual because you can tell by the fat stored up in the tail. And oop, oop. This is actually a species of eyelided gecko, which leopard geckos are also in this family, African fat tail geckos. So that means that they have eyelids. Most geckos don't have eyelids, they just lick their eyes to keep them moist. For, so we found a western banded gecko. Nice little guy, baby. Um, you can see, fat tail. And this little guy, a little jumpy. They have a clear skin. And they cannot climb like most people think mo all geckos can. Oh, look, you squeaking. But that's because they don't have toe pads, which toe pads have little hairs on which they stick to sur surfaces such as glass. Just put him in this container. There you can see him. He has lost his tail before, you can see, because this portion of his tail lacks the, those markings, which when most geckos lose them, you can tell that a that different portion of the tail has grown. And he probably just hatched and a couple yeah. of weeks ago, maybe. Yeah. He's a cute little one. When you're handling with a lizard like this, is you want to be careful and not spook it that much, or else it's going to lose its tail, and we don't want that because it needs it. It needs that to dis to distract predators to live. And it's a very curious little one. You can't tell what gender it is. You could, ah, he wants to climb out. They're very good climbers though because uh, they, they still do want have to. good claws. Oh, oh, oh. And. You want to be careful not to grab him by the tail, because if you grab him by the tail, you can pull it off. Very easily. And that is a defense mechanism that they want to have when attacked by a real predator, not a human. And you always want to release him where you found him, because you don't want him to mix with other animals and different subspecies. <laughs> They're also very good jumpers. They have very well developed vocal cords. They can hiss click, squeak, and 
you can hear them when you're just in the desert. And normally when you capture them, they can make a little squeak. But yeah. Uh, now we're gonna release him back where we found him because we don't want him to mix with other subspecies. Now he, he, he's still like right here. We found him right here, so we're gonna release him right here. Thank you, buddy. We're trying not to touch him too much and spook him. Not to spook him. There he is. There he goes. Bye, little buddy. We continued walking in hopes of finding the Mediterranean house gecko, the very elusive, common, but fast gecko. We barely saw a little silhouette of the gecko run into the bush. We together located it and pushed it out. Now, this gecko was a pain to find, and they're also very elusive because of their size. Mm. They have toe pads, and which allows them to climb on glass, like surfaces, plastic, yeah. Watch. Pretty much a lot of walls and stuff like that. Zoom in. So that's why we you find him? him on a little wall right there. Yeah, and they have the ability to lose their tail which just jacks their predator like all lizards. Much. Most lizards. And they are very fast, nocturnal. They are an invasive, oh, shh. And they are biters. And they're an invasive species to Arizona. These little species got here when they came on ships, which then led them into America. And then once they were in America, they climbed on to different people who are traveling throughout America. And then eventually, all those people who are traveling to different states, eventually they got here to Arizona. And they have an amazing ability to coexist with humans. That's why they're called the house gecko. There are many species of the house gecko and they all like to live in houses. We're gonna put him in a container just to observe him, close to the ground so he doesn't fall because he's very squirmy. Now here, they like more human environments to stick, but we, so you, he's not really a sticky guy because tropical geckos normally need moist, moistness on their toes. So he was in that's more why of he's a, not really climbing. Yeah, he was in more of a dry area. Okay, we're gonna open the container to see what he looks like without, uh, any blue or a little bit of white. So he's a nice little guy. Never lost his tail before because the tail looks like consistent throughout the entire gecko. So he hasn't been scared much. Uh, he has a great design uh, on him to blend in perfectly with his surroundings. Like walls and stuff. You can also see that on this, ooh, on the side of him, he it looks like he, you can see his breathing. Now we're gonna release him, and I'm gonna him. and I'm gonna pick him up. Just we gotta put him back where he found, or you know what happens from that past uh, from the past episode. Or... Well, we you always know to release him where you found him. Yeah, and I got him right in here at this. Point. So we're gonna release him right in here. Oh, little guy. Let him get into his nice position like he was, and nice. Wow, that was amazing, wasn't it? Yeah. We learned a lot about the squirmy little creatures. We learned about their habitat and their features. We also learned how, how they got here and how hard they were to catch. We caught some spectacular specimens of the two species. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button. Also hit the like button. And the notification bell. Catch, catch us again, again on our next adventure of Critter Chasing Kids. kids.